Everybody wants to be a millionaire. There's even a famous TV show created around that concept. But does everyone want to flaunt their millions once they have them in the bank? You might think that's the case, but the following story will change your mind. There are people with totally different mindsets for every human activity there is. And it seems being a millionaire is not the exception. Don't you believe us? Stay with us until the end of this video if you want to know the story of a man that was so unchanged by money that he even kept working all his life as any other poor person would. This is the story of a janitor who kept his $8 million secret his entire life. A Simple Man's Life One would expect to find all kinds of prerequisites in the biography of a guy that left a multi-million dollar fortune after his death at 92 years old. Things like coming from an accommodated family, having a fancy degree in business or economics, or even landing an awesome job with a huge salary at one big tech company. But none of these things are part of Roland Reed's story. He was just a simple man who had the simplest manual jobs in a small American town, but happened to amass the sum of $8 million without anyone around him knowing about it. Ronald Reed grew up in Dummerston, Vermont, a little town with less than 2,000 inhabitants within an impoverished farming household. Not the kind of guy who gets a car for his 16th birthday. He had to walk or hitchhike four miles every day to get to his high school and was the first high school graduate in his family. He enlisted in the army during World War II and served in Italy as a military policeman. After an honorable discharge from the military in 1945, Reed returned to Brattleboro, Vermont, where he worked as a gas station attendant and mechanic for about 25 years. Reed even met his wife while working at Haviland's gas station. Barbara March was a regular customer of the place who would later become his wife. She already had a couple of teenage children, one of them in college, when they got married in 1960. They lived together in a $12,000 house and Reed paid for his stepchildren's college tuition. When his wife died of cancer in 1970, he retired. But this new state of things lasted only one year. It seems that resting wasn't his style. He then took a part-time janitor job at JCPenney, where he worked for another 17 years until 1997. He always drove a $5,000 secondhand Toyota Yaris and never remarried. Oh, and when Mr. Reed died, he had unsuspectedly left behind an $8 million fortune. Approximately $2 million went to his stepchildren, and the rest was donated. $1.2 million to Brooks Memorial Library and $4.8 million to Brattleboro Memorial Hospital. But how is this possible? What is missing from this apparently inconsequential biography? Did the people around him even know about his wealth? Everybody was shocked. Asking around for family and friend stories, the shocking truth was revealed. No one knew a thing about the money maybe except for his lawyer around the last few years of his life. He was a hard worker, but I don't think anybody had an idea that he was a multi-millionaire, Reed's stepson Philip Brown told the local newspaper in 2015. All his family thought he barely made enough to survive in his janitor job. His simple life, humble appearance, and daily routine never gave anything away either. Ellen Smith, who casually befriended Mr. Reed while working at the cafeteria at Brattleboro Memorial Hospital, remembered his daily routine in an interview for today. He'd order the same thing each morning, a cup of coffee and an English muffin with peanut butter. He would wear winter coats with safety pins keeping them closed. Even Lori Rowell, his attorney, had a hard time believing him when he revealed his wealth to her. Initially, he told me that he had money, and I really didn't think so because of the way he dressed, she told in the same interview for today. It was hard to believe that a man that lived in such a frugal way could be telling the truth about owning millions of dollars in investments. His attorney also remembers that he had parked far enough away that he didn't have to pay the parking meter. Can you imagine owning $8 million and living like that? Or was that his secret precisely? Let's see how he became a millionaire. Exercising Frugality we already heard some examples that showed how Mr. Reed took his frugal nature to an extreme level by living like a low-income citizen, enjoying the simplest things in life, and spending only the bare minimum to get through the days. But is this the way to live for someone who is silently making millions? Many could argue that his whole ordeal was an exercise in fertility because he didn't even enjoy his wealth. Well, we can't be sure about that because we can't understand his motives. 
Maybe he just wanted to prove to himself he could do it and didn't really care about the money. Maybe he only wanted to build a better future for his stepchildren and his community. The thing is, it worked. Controlling his spending habits must have been crucial to start a strategy and to maintain his assets growing over time. Any other first-timer would have bought a mansion and a couple of Lambos and started seeing the money slowly fading away. Investing, but how? Mr. Reed was no scholar or business graduate, as we've already seen. He was just a guy who enjoyed reading and researching the stock market in his free time as he patiently sipped on coffee in a public library. He read a lot, trained himself, and started small. His trades go back to the 1950s. In 1959, when he was 37 years old, he used the majority of his savings to buy 39 shares of Pacific Gas and Electric for $2,380 and started building his portfolio from there. When he was ready to dive deeper into the stock market, he bought shares in a very specific type of companies as he followed these criteria. 1. He picked stocks from companies whose businesses and products he knew and understood through first-hand experience. 2. He would buy only blue-chip shares. This is stocks from long-established and successful companies that typically have a large market capitalization, a sterling reputation, and an excellent record of good results. 3. He would buy stocks that generated dividends. He wasn't going to be the kind of guy that bought a stock to live glued to price charts and predictions to look for an exit point in which to sell high. Nope, he would hold his shares forever and expect the checks to arrive in the mail every quarter. Four, he divided his money into categories and invested small amounts into multiple companies rather than putting big money in fewer companies. Patience. This rather cautious investment approach helped him avoid bubbles like the infamous dot-com bubble around the 2000s. He always played safe and aimed for the long run. And that's something you can understand if you take a look at his portfolio, consisting of only 95 stocks that were held for decades. According to his attorney, most of his investments we found in a safe deposit box. When we totaled them, there were $6.8 million worth of investments in the safe deposit box. He had AT&T, Bank of America, CBS, GE, General Motors, things you would recognize. He only invested in what he knew and in what paid dividends. That was important to him. The guy spent approximately 60 years patiently waiting and holding his stocks, regularly accumulating equity. Can this be replicated today? Expert financial advisors did the math and suggested that to imitate his success, you would have to invest approximately $300 a month for over 65 years for a total investment of $273,000 that would generate roughly $8.3 million. So, not the most straightforward strategy if you want to become rich fast, right? Mr. Reed was, in the end, a guy whose hobby was investing. A regular person that would take some time out of his life to research stocks and make prudent and well-chosen investments. One can only imagine what he could have accomplished if he had chosen investment as a career path or even dedicated full-time to this vocation. Imagine what you can do with the infinite number of resources in your hands today. If you have a working internet connection, you already have more sources to investigate and opportunities to learn from. On the downside, the economic paradigms have changed a lot in the last decades. As an expert financial advisor told CNBC as they discussed Mr. Reed's case, there's a big risk here. One of the things we have to think about is, sure, it's important to save $350 a month over a 40-year span, but remember, that assumes an 8% return. So does this mean it's impossible to repeat Mr. Reed's feat today? She continues, we are in an environment right now where there are literally negative interest rates, right? I think one of the things that really helped him was certainly saving in the 70s, where he was probably accumulating cash before he moved into the stock market and then caught the tech boom. So I think one of the things that's really important for us is to take a step back and say, look, it's great that this happened over the last 40 years, but there's a lower probability that it happens over the next 40 years. So we must take Mr. Reed's story with a grain of salt in today's fast-changing economic landscape. The story comes with several morals embedded into its fabric. Where can we begin? Do not judge anyone based on his appearance? Check. Surely not his car, his habits, or even his clothes would have given away the true wealth of this man. Live frugally. Check. Mr. Reed was a rich person who really knew how to live without any unnecessary ostentation or public displays of wealth. 
Things get even more ironic if you think about a guy called Mr. Reed donating money to a library. It seems as if everything was meant to be in this story. And we can't assure you you'd be able to replicate this extraordinary success, but you can surely take some notes from Ronald Reed's amazing life choices if you want to become a millionaire.